Malo elau Maria ho eiki mo le lei ai tonga mo vulang koto o kutare tele le lei ki mo utolu ki tau proklama talano o hoani me ho mo lei tio mo televisa ne Pacifica. We'd like to warmly welcome you to Talanoa here on Pacifica TV and Radio. Storytelling and the oral preservation of history, compositions, genealogies, and fables has long been a forte of Tongan culture since ancient times. During the reign of Her Majesty Queen Salote Tupou III, often affectionately referred to as the Golden Era of the Kingdom of Tonga, the Royal Palace in Nukualofa became the centre of the kingdom's cultural and musical creativity. That legacy continues in the royal family today, and Pasavika TV and Radio are extremely honoured to be in the presence of Honourable Federica Lupe Oluiva Fatafehi Lapaha Tuita. Honourable Fatafehi is a great granddaughter of Her Majesty Queen Salote, granddaughter of His Majesty King Taufa Hautupo IV, daughter of the Princess Royal, Her Royal Highness Princess Salote, Mafile Opilulevo Tuita, and Lord Maulupe Kotofa Tuita. In her own right, Honourable Fatafehi is an accomplished author amongst a range of advocacy projects for Tongans marginalised. Talanoa is humbled and blessed to be joined from Nukualofa by Honourable Fatafehi to discuss her latest book, Dancing Shadows in Animation. Maluela Maria Vita Una, Honourable Fatafehi, it's such an honour to have you and thank you so much for graciously accepting this uh, opportunity to have a Talanoa here on Pasifika TV and radio. Uh, before we go any further, uh, please accept this opportunity to provide uh, a brief introduction to yourself in terms of your book writing. Oh, Malo, thank you very much for um, inviting me to Talanoa with you. Uh, well, in terms of writing, I started writing a few years back uh, for a website based in America um, called the what do .com. And um, I didn't know that I that I'd enjoy writing as much as I as I do now. But uh, I started writing and it was around the time that His Late Majesty King George V passed away. And um, I didn't think at the time that anyone would be interested in what I had to say or, or any of my, or that my writing would resonate with anyone. But some people uh, enjoyed what I wrote, uh, especially because it was from inside the family. And at the time, uh, there was no uh, communication going outside of our family, especially during his funeral, which is, sorry, which is what I had written about. So I guess it just sort of put a different uh, lens on and perspective on how we cope, what it is, you know, how close we are in our perceptions of each other. So that's how I felt, um, I felt about, about how my writing was received. And through over the years, I found that writing is a form of therapy as well. And I know, and there are some things I, I haven't been able to share, or maybe it's best not to share, but otherwise I really do enjoy writing. And it's even more of a blessing that, um, that it resonates with people. Absolutely. I know myself personally, I've been a follower of, of a lot of your work online and it is intriguing. It's, it's a journey of learning and growth. And your latest book is a children's book entitled Dancing Shadows in Animation. Uh, could you take us on a bit of a journey to describe the story behind the title of this book? Yes, well, I, we had my sisters and I had grown up listening to my mother always telling us stories about her childhood and her experiences with her parents, but most of all with her with her uh, grandmother, her late Majesty Queen Salote. Uh, we'd, we'd listen and, and we loved listening to the stories and the lessons that were told through uh, her stories, but we never thought anything would come of it. We thought, okay, this is just her personal experience and that um, it would just remain with us. Even telling the stories to our own children was, uh, wasn't was something that, that came easily to us. So it was all just her. She had the full copyright of her experiences and, and none of us um, dared to even, to even um, repeat those stories because they were so personal. But uh, my mother and I were talking one evening and she said, you know, I... Um, I, I've always wanted to write children's stories, but I've just never had the time. And I turned to her and I said, you know, it's really funny that you mentioned that because 
in the you know in this day and age i found it uh really important to to just write to write things that came to mind and her stories the things that she tell us were one of the things that i would would write and uh they'd include you know lessons that she was taught by her parents but most of her stories were with um her late with her late grandmother her late majesty queen salote she was always by her side so there were so many stories that she tell us and we would struggle with repeating those stories to people because those are her stories but in this day and age i found that um not only is it therapeutic to write but it's important to just record things and anything that would come to mind i would just i would just start writing and there was one one evening when my mother shared with me that she always wanted to write uh, children's stories but she just never had the time and i turned to her and i said you know it's funny that you mentioned that because i've been writing things and um they're based on what she had told me so i shared dancing shadows with her which is based on a moment a very vivid moment that she remembers uh with her grandmother of her of her late grandmother when she lie there on her bed and look over and see her grandmother's hands haka haka so tapwang pe moya she was choreographing uh, a song that she had written and instead of being fixated on her hands she her eyes would always drift over to the shadows that her hands cast on the wall and my mother would just lie there in her bed which was located right next to queen salote's bed and just stare at the wall watching her hands the shadows dance and she'd fall asleep to it almost every single night so that's something that's really um stuck with her that stayed with her and when she tells the story you can just i just imagine it happening it plays out in my head so when it comes to the um animated animated version of of dancing shadows the story book I'm really it was it was incredibly moving to see what they had achieved so that's far I mean that far at the time because it's just as I had imagined if not better so I'm really happy can can share in this experience and and see what I see with my mind's eye Thank you so much for sharing that um it was a little bit emotional as you were sharing that there because it's such an intimate moment because for on the outset where we where we sit as the common people you know we're so intrigued by these amazing compositions these songs that we the continually passed on but to i guess you your book there and the title has taken us into a, a personal moment from the very beginning and origins of that choreography where where it happens behind the scenes so thank you so much for sharing that and it's probably a good segue into my next question which is what kinds of stories have you captured in this book Well the most of the stories that I had written I and the story I wrote for this book Dancing Shadows is based solely on the relationship between a grandmother and her granddaughter and that's what I really wanted to to focus on was yes the grandmother is a queen and and her granddaughter is a princess but just that relationship is something that so many can relate to So that's one of the uh stories that's the main uh, the essence of the story is just that love between a grandmother and her granddaughter the patience between that you know the patience that a grandmother has for her grandchild and how curious a, a young grandchild can be you know children are they're so curious as to why things are the way they are why can't i do this so it it it's um it's based on that you know my um the what my mother expressed she had experienced but then i put myself in her shoes and remember the way i used to think when i was a child so it's a mixture of 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 there's a little there's mostly her but there's a little bit of me in there as well well that's beautiful and the the illustrations are stunning as well could you tell us a little bit about the pictures that readers can expect to see in dancing shadows in animation the the best thing about uh working with twinies publishing was that i was they were we are we are in constant contact and it's been that way since day 1 you know every step of the process including illustrations i was involved in it as in, as involved as i can be um from tonga because twinies is based there in australia otherwise it was an uh 
it was very uh it was this very intense but in the best sense if if that makes sense uh back and forth going back and forth over ideas for the illustrations what i liked what um they were capable of doing which is which blew my mind i mean they were very um i they're just so talented a wonderful talented group of people who were able to illustrate and bring my my idea to life it goes to show that uh, despite border closures and what not that uh, technology uh, doesn't act as a barrier to progressing work forward even though we're all in different countries at different times um look it's extremely rare to read stories published by members of any royal family let alone our beloved tongan royal family what has been the reception from within the family to your concept of sharing these valuable and very personal accounts Well my my mother's been aware of everything since day 1 because I've always shared my writing with her and and she tells me you know she thinks maybe if I added this or or or, or took away this then you know she she'd give me her advice so uh with her she was always very supportive I didn't really tell anyone <laughs> else in my family about the book until the day we announced that it was going to be published and that this is the book that I had written in you know with uh Twinnie's support and then my family started contacting me and my <laughs> sisters would ask what is this book you've written <laughs> when did you write it and I told them, I was like well lockdowns are good for for some things you know I you really get to just focus and you're forced to sit there and find something to do and be you know pro progressive and uh, uh, make use of your time so uh, aside from that they've been very supportive of of all my writing and and the posts that I've been making and twinnie's been making to promote it they they they're always there to to show that they are there to support me and the stories yeah <laughs> Her Majesty Queen Salote will forever be credited as Tonga's greatest poet and most distinguished composer. Uh, one of those treasured moments affectionately penned in this story reflects on one of Queen Salote to Paul III's most famous song compositions named Katinia. Uh, could you share a little bit about this? Yes, thank you. Well, the Katinia is, is is one of her one of her most well-known compositions and it's something that it's one of the songs one of my favorite songs and the truth is i didn't i didn't plan on including the story um around this song in the in in my uh children's story it it just really it really was just a very natural process and uh it was it was a perfect way to to show uh the love between Queen Salote's character in the book and my mother's character in the book. Uh because there's so much more meaning to the song as we know. Queen Salote was a master of kahiriaki, you know, and and all her songs are just she was a master at poetry. So it adds to the depth of the moment in the book. Knowing what we know about Queen Salote and her composition just adds to that moment between a grandmother and her granddaughter. And what I hoped was that even for young children who read the book and don't know who Queen Salote was and don't understand what the history behind the song Katinia is, that it still means something to them and that it still um, resonates with them. That's fantastic. You did touch on this a little bit earlier, but the book has been edited and published by Twinnies who are responsible for a delightful range of Tongan publications and animations and video content. Uh would you share a little bit more about the publisher? Yes, well, uh like I I mentioned you uh, before Twinnies is based there in Australia and is a Tongan owned and run group and a young lady named Tema and twins Sela and Melenaite uh who are uh, who are behind uh, what inspired uh Twinnie's brand so i work with their aunt named Anna and i'm hoping that one day i'll get to meet the entire team in person one day soon uh but it's really a very inspiring story twinnie's publishing and the twinnie's brand started in tw- 2019 and it was just so that they could self publish their own 
book. Uh, it was called Kita Masi Gosione, and it was just a Christmas present for for the children. And uh, I think it's just very it's it's inspiring and uh, meant to be that I had crossed paths with them because of how they started off. They started off so small; they didn't intend for anything to grow the way that it has grown, but it has. And now we're working together. And I found that the whole process of writing my children's story, from writing my children's story to meeting the Twinnies group who have published、uh, Dancing Shadows, is really eye-opening, and it's been a very smooth journey. And like I said before, and I keep saying it again, is I feel like it's meant to be, because you, like the way that we've、uh, met, it was just so out of the blue, and yet we were able to. To publish this book, and I had already written my stories, so a lot of the work they said that the big part of the work was was completed by me, which was to write the story. So the rest of of the work was、um, a back and forth between me and them. You, you've shared a little bit about your journey as a writer. Now, now, children are the future of our world. How important is it that our oral traditions are captured in written form in order to continue that legacy to future generations? Yes, well, I, Tongan, the Tongan culture and our traditions were always passed down orally, but in you know today, I think it's really important to own our stories, and by doing that, but through owning it, you write it down and you put your name to it and you. Uh, share it with your community. The dangers with an oral tradition is that anyone can come and take that and use it, you know, for their for their own benefit. But having something, knowing something、um, that belongs to your people, that is your culture, and writing it down is taking ownership of it and keeping it with your people, you know. And I think that's really important because this is what we have. For our children, for them to inherit and take with them,、um, you know, down, and as they grow up and share with their children and the rest of the community, and there are just so many dominant elements in the world today, and our children can find themselves lost in it. So, having ownership of our writing of our traditions, writing it down, it really helps with their identity, and. It's empowering, and that's something that I think that's one of the best things that we can pass on to our young people is empowerment, so that they are strong and they they are capable of standing up against so many different things in this world that might damage them. And and I, and just I guess to add, in a sense that what adds to the authenticity of of this story is that the the source is is from directly within our Tongan royal family, so it's not someone writing about it, but it's actually it, this is a personal story from your own family, which is just as I mentioned adds to the authenticity of it and the historical accuracy of what we're reading. So it's so good, really, I'm very very excited about this. On a, on a personal note, however, how did you personally find the process or or the journey of bringing This vision, this concept that that was in your heart to fruition through a fully illustrated and published children's book. We see the output, but obviously it started off as a as a vision. How was that journey for you personally? You know, I always give I give thanks not only to God, but I give thanks to our ancestors. I give thanks to my family because I feel that I'm just a vessel. I'm a vessel, and all these stories. Have been、um, passed down to me, and all I'm doing pretty much is writing it down, putting it down on paper, and with my family's permission, I can move forward with it. I think the best outcome、uh, with sharing our stories is that we're able to connect with our people, with the Tongan people. I mean, for so long now, I sense that there are there are few pockets and groups around the world within our Tongan community who have. Felt a disconnect between not only Tonga but the royal family and them. So it's time that we got personal and spoke and talanoa with our people, shared our stories because that's how we can reconnect with them. And I'm just very happy to be a part of that. There'll be people who are watching this interview right now, particularly as you've mentioned, they're members of our Tongan diaspora globally around the world. 
and um, people who have a keen interest in Tonga. What would your encouragement be to those who are contemplating and thinking about, should I purchase this book, um, uh, Dancing Shadows in Animation? What would your encouragement be to them? Oh, well, you know, like I, 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 I welcome you into our lives through my story, through this book. Um, rarely, but you know, we don't really often share our stories, but now is the time for it. And if you purchase the book, you know, the Twinnies publications, it really is um, a way to connect with us. Uh, we can't be there in person with everyone. So that's the best thing about sharing these stories uh, in, in the book and even with the uh, animated illustration with the animated book as well is that it's a way for us to connect as Tongans first and then you know our families and all that later but um, I'm so happy if you if you haven't purchased the book please purchase it because there's more coming I mean it, and it would be great for you to have an introduction to the, the rest of, of what it is that I'd like to share with with all of you. And it might be a little bit too soon to ask this question, but um, are there any other future projects of this nature that you're currently working on? Oh, yes, I'm always writing. I'm always writing. You know, the uh, even before I wrote Dancing Shadows, I was already writing different stories, but it's just a matter of anyone who's interested in, <laughs> in, 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 um, in helping share those stories so yes i'm still i'm working on on more stories there's more to come and uh if you know if there's anyone out there who's curious and wants to know well give me an email <laughs> maybe we can work something out to publish and share more it's absolutely fantastic um finally is there anything else that you'd like to add or share further with um with any of our viewers who are tuning in from around the world i'm yeah well thank you uh I just want to send my my love. I really hope you're all staying safe. And uh, I pray that this pandemic ends soon because Tonga misses its, its diaspora. And I'm sure that there are so many families and loved ones who want to reunite. But uh, until that happens, Honourable Father Fihi, on behalf of Pacifica TV and Radio, I'd like to um, extend our deepest gratitude and appreciation for affording us this rare opportunity for an, well, an online virtual audience, shall we say, via Zoom to discuss this treasure um, in our Tonga Literacy Library and wishing you every success with this book and very excited to think that there are some more projects coming on the horizon. Malo, malo alpito. Honorable Federica Lupe Oluiva, Fatafehi La Pahatuita, author of Dancing Shadows in Animation, a new Tongan children's book available from Twinnies at www.twinniesbooksandgoods.com. I note that there is a limited edition of signed copies available, as well as a foreword by the Princess Royal, Her Royal Highness Princess Salote Mafileo Pilolevo Tuita. Pia kwa kakato fokia etau polo kalama tala noa ki hoani me ihe leti omo e televizione basifika Pia kwa mao fakata wange pe foki na olele atu kia teki mou tolo koia o kumo mea mai mea pina Mea te au surieni malo au pito mo mea mai ka mo mea tu au fatu